Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel. In today's episode we are adding giant altars to our zoo. If you watched my last two videos you know that we are currently working on a small project called the Small Mammal House. We have already built an indoor habitat for the koalas and an indoor and outdoor habitat for the aardvarks. And today it is time for the giant otters. The giant otters were added with the last DLC, the aquatic pack. And as all the new animals, they are able to dive, which is super cool. Also, their diving animations are so fun. They do all those fast turns and are really, really playful. So if you haven't seen them diving, definitely go and check it out if you have an aquatic pack or just stay tuned to the end of this video where we'll have some cinematic shots and you will be able to see the otters dive. The giant otters habitat will be very similar to the aardvark habitat we built last time. In case you haven't seen that video, I will put the link down in the description as well as on the screen. So the giant otter habitat will have this indoor and an outdoor part. As I said last time, buildings like our small mammal house are really common in the zoos where we have changing seasons. We are building this zoo in the temperate biome, somewhere in Europe. So typically in Europe we have winter, spring, summer and autumn. Thanks to buildings like that, guests can observe the animals during the whole year. During the winter and the colder months, animals are kept in an indoor part of their habitat, especially the animals that come from more tropical regions. They are not used to and probably cannot survive the temperatures of European winters and they must be enclosed in a warm space for nearly half a year. This is when the houses like that come in handy, because the guests can still observe the animals even though they are closed in their shelter. Obviously, during the warmer months and the summer, animals are able to use both parts of the habitat, so you can observe them both inside and on the outside part. So let's pretend that it is summer in our zoo now and that the animals have access to all the parts of their habitats. Otters are aquatic animals, which means that they need to have an access to water all the time. They feel the most confident in the water, they find food in the water, they play in the water and they are really, really good swimmers. That is why I wanted to give them two swimming areas, one inside and one outside, so that during the colder months they can still use the water in their indoor ponds. The indoor pond has also an underwater viewing area for the guests. To achieve that I had to rise the whole ground in their, in their habitat a bit and then dig up this ditch for the water area. Underwater viewing isn't very high but the guests are still able to see the otters when they are diving underwater. Especially the kids for who the playful otters are for sure a big attraction. For the viewing panel of this inside part, I used the new fake rocks just as I did the last time. I also added these new fake trees and I think that it looks very very nice. The giant otters live in tropical forests of South America and adding those trees really added this tropical vibe to this habitat. I also saw that zoos very often use those trees, I mean fake trees, like this. They are incorporated to the viewing areas of the tropical habitats and it gives the feeling that the viewing panel is actually a part of the habitat. And I think that in the end I achieved a similar thing. Walking in the small mammal house 
the guests can see right away that in this habitat there is some tropical animal that likes to swim. I was actually very surprised when I found out that the giant otters are added with the new aquatic pack. Don't get me wrong, I was really happy that we are getting the otters because I wanted them from the very beginning, but the giant otters are actually not very popular in zoos. The most popular species of otter is actually a river otter. It lives naturally in Europe and North America. The river otters are very common in zoos. They are small animals, so they don't need very much space. They also live in temperate biomes or even in colder areas, so they are really resistant to wide range of temperatures and they are basically much easier to keep in zoos. The giant otters are the biggest species of otter, so they need bigger habitats and much more space. They also live in tropical climates, like in Amazon forests, so creating the right environment for them is quite demanding. And this is how our indoor part of this habitat is extremely useful. While creating this indoor water section, you could see me using a small trick. To make sure that animals will dive, they need to have a space of 4 by 4 parameter. They need 4 meter depth and 4 meter wide space, otherwise they simply won't dive. So what you can do is actually use a regular wall piece as a measure tool if you want to build a small water section and also be sure that the animals will actually dive in it. My otters actually use this indoor water section but they much prefer the bigger one on the outside. As you can see now I decorated all the boundaries of this water section with those new fake rocks. I also added new aquatic plants on the, on the bottom of the water and I used the habitat cooler as a fake filter. This water section may be small but remember that the otters have an additional one outside that is much bigger. I couldn't make it any bigger because the keepers must be able to get to the outside portion of the habitat. Unfortunately, we cannot add two gates to the habitat, which would be very useful with the habitats with a lot of water. Because right now you cannot build habitats that have, for example, two separate land sections that are divided by the water because the keeper simply won't reach the other part. I mean, you can do it, but you cannot put any food enrichment or any food bowls or troughs, because the keeper won't be able to fill them. I remember that in Zoo Tycoon 2, the keepers were actually able to swim, so that wasn't a big issue. I see why the Frontier didn't want to make the keeper swim, because it's quite unrealistic to be fair but adding the multiple gates could fix that problem and I really hope that it will be added in the future. Okay, I think that it is time for our fan fact! As my family of my lovely subscribers already know, by the way I need to come up with some name for you guys, if you have any name suggestions for our small family, please let me know in the comment section down below. I would really like to have a name for you guys. Okay, but as you guys know, every time we are adding a new animal to the zoo, I try to give you guys some fun facts about the animal. By the way, if you are new to this channel and didn't know that, I would like to give you a very warm welcome and a big thanks for watching. If you liked my video so far and want to see more inspiring builds in the future, please consider to subscribe my channel. It really helps my channel to grow. Okay, let's go back to our fan facts. As I already said, the giant otters are the largest otter species out of all 13 otter species. They are actually double the size of the world's smallest otter, the Asian short-clawed otter. 
The otters in general are closely related to weasels, badgers and wolverines. Giant otters are very sociable animals and they live in groups up to 20 individuals. Giant otters eat mainly fish, but they sometimes can eat small snakes such as baby anacondas or other reptiles such as small caimans. The giant otter's fur is actually water repellent, which means that, that it prevents the water from reaching the skin. They have very well developed sense of sight, which they use primarily for hunting, but they also use the whiskers to detect the prey in the water but by identifying changes in the water pressure and current. Giant otters are very loud animals. They produce around nine different types of sounds. Thanks to those sounds, they communicate between each other. They warn each other about the potential danger or send aggressive warning to one another. Giant otters live up to 12 years in the wild and up to 21 years in captivity. That means that with a lack of predators and plenty of food, they can live up to twice as more as usual. And that is all that I have for you today. I hope you are able to learn something about our lovely giant otters. By the time I was talking to you guys, I already started to create the land part of this indoor habitat. I used the temperate rocks because the tropical rocks were a bit too dark for this already dark part of this habitat. Also, I use a lot of tropical plants because we can actually use those plants inside where they have right conditions, so I use them whenever I can. Because to be realistic, I don't use such plants outside when their weather conditions are changing a lot. In a second, I will start to create this outside part of this habitat. I had this idea in my mind of creating a small creek, like a small river, with a little spring so that the water comes out of the rock formation, goes through the whole habitat and falls to the small lake where the animals can dive. And the small lake will have its own underwater viewing gallery. So this is basically what I went for. At first I was really struggling with the fence because I wanted to make it identical to the shape of the fence of the Oddvark habitat. And after that I was struggling with the path a bit. It's always hard for me to do the paths when there is water near or when I want to build an underwater viewing gallery. But in the end it turned out quite okay. The outside part of this habitat is more in the temperate style or temperate biome style. I used mainly the European plants outside, again just to be more realistic. I also used the temperate rocks, but to decorate the underwater as well as the viewing gallery I used the new fake rocks, but I also tried to match the color of the temperate rocks to make it more cohesive. In the end, it turned out that this habitat is a little bit too small for four otters, but I think that in real life it would be just perfect for them. I added so many rocks that it cut the traversable area of the otters nearly by half. In real life, the otters would be able to use the whole habitat. They would climb on the rock, they would use all the bank of this water feature, they would go inside the bushes and really compared to their size, I think that this habitat would be very comfortable for them. By the end of this video, you will see me creating the backstage area for the keepers for this habitat. All the habitats in our small mammal house will have those backstage areas. Again, it is something for the sake of realism. In this backstage area, I, I put some supplies like food and so on. I also put the fridge for the otter's food. For the backstage areas I tend to use a lot of things from the steam workshop. 
I don't want my videos to be too long and creating those small things takes a lot of time. But I also want to give shout out to the people that add those things to the workshop because their work is simply beautiful and mind-blowing. Whenever I use anything from the workshop, I always list all the things down in the comment section. You will find there a link to the Steam Workshop so that you can download this thing yourself. I really like how this habitat has turned out. It was actually my first time adding the otters to the zoo. I think it looks very realistic and that it would actually meet all the animals needs. It has two swimming areas, it has a lot of open space, it has a lot of plants and simply looks very natural. And yeah, this is all that I wanted to tell you today. Please enjoy the rest of this video. There will be some cinematic shots by the end of this video, so you'll be able to see our lovely giant otters dive. So definitely stay tuned for that. In next episodes, we'll be adding the red panda and the Chinese pangolin to our small mammal house. So if you want to see me building those habitats, definitely stay with us. Those videos will be out probably next week. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. And please subscribe to my channel if you're looking for inspiration for your virtual zoo. I try to build realistic habitats, so if you are a fan of that style, definitely subscribe so you can see me building more. I hope you guys have a lovely day. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!